Today we will learn about disensitized solar cells. This is yet another method where dyes have been used for a non textile purpose. We saw how dyes could be used particularly natural dye and rose anthocyanin could be used as an acid base indicator or even to make pH paper for a change in finding out the change in pH. Similarly, dyes can also have another non textile use and that has in the recent years been very very popularized for making solar cells. So, in this lecture I want to introduce you to this uh, new concept of dye sensitized solar cells and let us try to take a look as to what is the role of dye in trapping the sunlight and how does it convert it into uh, electricity. So, this is the whole concept, but the concept is, seems to be just a one liner, but as we go along you will see that there is a lot to understand and a lot to talk about. What is dye sensitized solar cells? A dye sensitized solar cell is a low cost solar cell belonging to the group of thin film solar cells. It is based on semiconductor formed between a photosensitized anode and an electrolyte, a photoelectrochemical system. So, it must have a thin film which is, uh, which is of uh, solar cells and it must be made up of a semiconductor material which should have a photosensitized anode working as a so photosensitized anode and there should be an electrolyte to carry out the photoelectrochemical uh, reaction. First version of dye solar cell also known as Gretzel cell was invented by Michael Gretzel. So, it's it is more popularly known as Gretzel cell because that was the first model of trapping solar energy and converting into electrical energy. And then we will see where does the dye play a role. In a traditional solar cell, it is made from two doped crystal, one doped with n type impurities that is it is n type semiconductor which add additional free conduction band electrons and the other doped with p type impurities which is p type se uh, semiconductor which add additional electron holes. So, basically you are trying to con make more and more electrons conduct by using two different types of uh, semiconductors one is the n type semiconductor and the other one is p type can semiconductor. When placed in contact some of the electrons in the n type portion flow into the p type to fill in the missing electrons also known as electron holes. Eventually enough electrons will flow across the boundary to equalize the Fermi levels of the two materials. The result is a region at an interface the p n junction where charge carriers are depleted and or accumulated on each side of the interface. In silicon, the transfer of electron produces a potential barrier of about 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 volt. So, you see all that happens at the interface of these two materials and because there are conducting electrons in one region and there are some holes uh, of electron that means these electrons have been ejected out. So, those holes are being filled by the conducting electrons. So, this is what the broad spectrum you know fundamental of a solar cell is. How does it work? When placed in sun photons of the sunlight can excite electrons on the p type side of semiconductor a process known as photo excitation. So, these electron holes were generated by the incidence of sunlight and this process 
in the p type of semiconductor is called photo excitation in silicon sunlight can provide enough energy to push an electron out of lower energy valence band into a higher in energy conduction band at as the name implies electrons in the conduction band are free to move about the silicon when a load is placed across the cell as a whole these electron will flow out of the p type side into the n type side lose energy while moving through the external circuit and then flow back into the p type material where they can once again recombine with the valence band hole they have left behind in this way sunlight creates an electrical current so the whole process is that from the p type it gets excited goes to the n type and then in the conduction band uh, joins the conduction band of the n type and then finally through the outer circuit it moves out and because there are holes created in the p type they are then the electrons will flow out of the p type side into the n type lose energy while moving through the external circuit and then flow back to the p type and thereby generating electrical current so similarly when we use this is a normal solar cell but if we use dye sensitized solar cell where what is the role of the dye because the dye sensitized solar cell provides technically and economically incredible alternative concept to present day a p to n junction photovoltaic device so it is like from the p type of semiconductor the electrons move to n type and that is what is causing the photovoltaic device to form in contrast to the conventional systems where the semiconductor assume both the task of light absorption and charge carrier transport the two functions are separated here light is absorbed by a sensitizer which is anchored to the surface of a wide band semiconductor charge separation takes place at the interface via photo induced electron injection from the dye into the conduction band of the solid so it's slightly different as compared to taking two semiconductors of the p type and the n type here there you know the light is absorbed by this dye which is a sensitizer and then this sensitizer is actually anchored onto the wide surface of the semiconductor so that then excites the semiconductor charge separation takes place at the interface via photo induced electron injection from the dye so from the dye it goes into the semiconductor which is adjoining it and then the whole process takes place so the rest of the part that the semiconductor pushing the electron to the conduction band remains the same so it is only the role of the dye is to trap sunlight and act like a sensitizer so the name dye sensitized solar cell carriers are transported in the conduction band of the semiconductor to the charge collector the use of sensitizers having a broad absorption band in conjunction with oxides of nano crystalline morphology permit to harvest a large fraction of light so now the importance of these carrier that they are transporting electrons to the conduction band Uh, from one semiconductor to another is acting just like a charge collector and these sensitizers can absorb a lot of sunlight and through the help of a micro crystalline uh, you know film preferably titanium dioxide or tin oxide kind of uh, nano crystalline uh, material it permits to absorb more and more light through the dye that is 
impregnated on to the uh, titanium dioxide material or tin oxide material. Nearly quantitative conversion of incident photon into electric current is achieved over a large spectral range extending from the UV to the near IR region. So, the sunlight which is nothing but a source of electromagnetic spectrum has various types of light waves and these light rays are ranging which can be trapped are ranging from UV to IR region. Overall standard uh, you know solar cell such a dye sensitized solar cell can handle current conversion efficiencies up to 10 percent that much has been achieved so far. So, you see it is if one has many such uh, uh, cells in alignment then one can generate substantial amount of current which can be used for lighting lamps and for uh, all other domestic as well as industrial processes. There are good prospects to produce these cells at low cost than conventional devices. Here we present the current state of the field, discuss new concepts of dye sensitized nanocrystalline solar cell including heterojunction variants and analyze the perspective for the future development of the technology. Already the technology is quite developed, but there is always a scope of finding different variables and different variants of material, many new dyes and let me tell you that these dye sensitized solar cells can be from dyes from the synthetic or from natural. So, that is an advantage that here is one field which can use both types of dyes because the primary function of the dye is to take the sunlight particularly the sunlight from the UV to IR region uh, electromagnetic radiation for this photo excitation work which is then transferred to the semiconductor and then the semiconductor then does the uh, job of creating the electrons and uh, through the excitation. Photovoltaic devices, photovoltaic devices are based on the concept of charge separation at an interface of two materials of different conduction mechanism. If there are two materials which have different conduction conducting band at the interface there is a kind of a potential that is generated. And because of that gen, uh, generation of a difference in the conduction capacity, the, the cell has a charge separation. And that uh, is uh, the fact that is made use of when one is designing photovoltaic device. To date this field has been dominated by solid state junction devices, specially made of silicon and profiting from the experience and material availability resulting from the semiconductor industry. So, it has been silicon and materials of silicons that have been developed which have been extensively used for making photovoltaic cells. Why? Because silicon has this um, very unique power of conduction and it has been found that it is an ideal material for these devices. The dominance of photovoltaic field by inorganic solid state junction devices is now being challenged by the emergence of the third generation of cells based for example, on nanocrystalline and conducting polymer films. So, many new advances have come, but the first cell that was made was with silicon. Now, how can we introduce newer and newer material? of the nano region or nano crystalline quality, so that the basic conduction band can be increased. Because it is this conduction band and this conduction band gets uh, reinforcement from the photons that have actually hit the dye or the polymeric substance and that excitation then help uh, goes on for photo excitation and this photo excitation then creates electron holes and so on and so forth. And then the rest of the story remains the same. Now, in order 
to have a low cost because these materials are all very expensive. So, is there a possibility to have a low cost dye sensitized solar cell? Otherwise, why should one go? If one can make a photovoltaic cell or a solar cell by a cheaper material, then dye sensitized solar cells, nobody would opt for a dye sensitized solar cell. So, in order for popularization of this dye sensitized solar cell, which is our main uh, subject of today's lecture, these offer the prospective of very low cost fabrication and present attractive features that facilitate market entry, because nothing will be taken up commercially if it is not cost effective. It is now possible to depart completely from the classical solid state junk, junction device by replacing the contacting phase to the semiconductor by an electrolyte, liquid, gel or solid, thereby forming a photo electrochemical cell. So, the only difference here is that one is designed a material which is low cost material, only then the cost will come down. The phenomena progress, the phenomenal progress realized recently in the fabrication and characterization of nanocrystalline material has opened up vast new opportunities for these system. And as you would understand that nano materials are in the nano scale as the name suggests and the UV light is also you know we say nanometers. So, they are kind of uh, very compatible light is falling onto these dyes and these dyes are impregnated on a uh, very fine nano crystalline material. I told you titanium dioxide or tin oxide mostly these are oxides and these material can then uh, start doing the uh, photo excitation process. The operating details at the heart of the system is a, is a mesoporous oxide layer composed of nanometer sized particle which have been sintered together to allow for electronic conduction to take place. So, it is a sintered oxide the material of choice has been titanium dioxide although alternative wide band gap oxides like zinc oxide and niobium oxide and tin oxides have also have been investigated. So, it is not hard and fast rule to only use titanium dioxide, but titanium oxide nano crystalline material have been popularized, but there are other alternatives like zinc oxide, tin oxide, niobium oxide and so on, they too have been investigated. Attached to the surface of the nano crystalline film is a mono layer of charge transfer dye. So, now this on the surface of the this titanium dioxide or zinc oxide or tin oxide material is the charge transfer dye just one layer of it. You do not have to put a thick uh, coating of it. Photo excitation of the latter results in the injection of the electron into the conduction band of the oxide. The original state of the dye is subsequently restored by electron donation from the electro electrolyte usually an organic solvent containing redox systems such as iodide triiodide couple. So, you see the electron that has gone into the conduction band from the dye to the titanium dioxide conduction band is replenished by the electro or the redox system of the electrolyte which is taken as the um, you know uh, as a part of the solar cell. So, this is how the solar cell looks like where the photo excitation of from the sunlight on to this and you see that the photons create holes in the titanium in the dye sensitized thing and then the electrons are pushed into the titanium dioxide. So, this is the kind of N and P junction this is a typical example of the silicon 
and the n and p junction under illumination. A photo induced whole electron pair is separated by local field of the junction. So, there is an interface and that is what is connected to the outer circuit and the bulb starts slitting. So, this is a typical example of a solar cell which is uh, described here and you can see that the same thing happens in the dye sensitized cell also, where the barrier between the n type and the p type can be uh, covered up and there is this uh, conduction, because what is important is that there should be enhancement of electron in the conduction band. So, whether it is done by the help of just trapping the solar cell between the two different types of semiconductors or by using a titanium dioxide nanocrystalline material coated with dye. Uh, thin layer of dye, both would do the similar function. How it works? Let us see. The regeneration of the sensitizer by iodide intercepts the recapture of the conduction band electron by the oxidized dye. So, during the process of sunlight attacking the, the dye, what happens? There is an oxidation that occurs on the dye. We had learnt about the oxidation of colours. If you recall, we had spent a whole lecture and that was primarily to make you understand that dyes undergo oxidation, so, particularly such as, uh, you know special dyes can undergo uh, oxidation. And so, the similar type of thing is happening here. The regeneration of the sensitizer dye by iodide actually takes place and the conduction band is the electrons are enhanced from the dye and the dye in turn is then oxidized because loss of electron is also oxidation. So, the iodide is regenerated in term in turn by the reduction of the triiodide at the counter electrode the circuit being completed via electron migration through the external load. So, this iodide is giving electron and that is regenerated from the triiodide. So, that is why the electrolyte is taken as a iodide and triiodide system. The voltage generated under Illumination correspond to the difference between the Fermi level of the electron in the solid and the redox potential of the electrolyte. So, obviously, there is a redox potential because the triiodide must replenish the electron deficiency of the iodides and subsequently the iodides are actually giving back the electron to the oxidized dye and so on. So, this, there is a kind of a chain cycle which is happening and the initiator or the sensitizer of this program is a dye. So, you see that is why the name dye sensitized solar cell. Overall, the device generates electric power from light without suffering any permanent chemical transformation. So, you see it is only the electrons being transferred from one end to another. So, there is no complete loss of any kind, the light is being trapped from the solar energy and that triggers the entire reaction and it does not have any permanent chemical transformation. Nothing goes from one state to another in an unreversible manner. So, the material can go on working very efficiently. Typical Gretzel cell, we talked about Gretzel, Michael Gretzel was the first one to make dye sensitized cell. So, therefore, we must always uh, remember his name and know his substantial contribution. The modern dye sensitized solar cell, the Gretzel cell is composed of a porous layer of titanium dioxide nanoparticles covered with a molecular dye that absorbs sunlight. It is a fin simple phenomena like what chlorophyll you know takes the sunlight in green leaves 
and starts doing pho photosynthesis. Similarly, here instead of chlorophyll, there is a, a dye which absorbs sunlight. The titanium dioxide is immersed under an electrolyte solution above which is a platinum based catalyst. As in the con uh, conventional alkaline battery and anode, the titanium dioxide and the cathode that is the platinum are placed on either side of the liquid conductor that is the electrolyte. So, that is what you know it is just uh, a very conventional platinum acts as a cathode and titanium dioxide acts as a anode. Sunlight passes through the transparent electrode into the dye layer where it can excite electrons that then flow into the titanium oxide conduction band. The electrons flow towards the transparent electrode where they are collected for a powering uh, uh, for powering a load. After flowing through the external circuit, they are reintroduced into the cell on the metal electrode on the back flowing into the electrolyte. So, it that is how the circuit is completed. The electrolyte then transports the electron back to the dye molecules. So, the electron replenishing is done through the outer circuit back into the electrolyte and from the electrolyte to the back to the dye. So, that is how the circuit is complete and it is a uh, you would see that nothing has got destroyed. Nothing is like, uh, nothing needs to be replaced uh, as the whole cell is quite, uh, is not getting disturbed or not getting replenished or not getting used up as what we will say. Like in alkaline battery, it gets used up. The dye sensitized solar cells, dye sensitized solar cells separate the two functions provided by silicon in a traditional cell design. Normally, the silicon acts as both the source of photoelectron as well as providing the electrical field to separate the charges and create a current. In a dye sensitized solar cell, the bulk of the semiconductor is used solely for the charge transport. The photoelectrons are provided from a separate photosensitive dye. So, here in the only difference between the silicon type and the dye sensitized solar cell, you should know the difference between the two is that here the silicon is doing all the part, dye gener uh, electron generation, electron transport. Whereas, in this dye sensitized, the electrons are being generated by the dye, but transported by the semiconductor to carry out the charge transport. The charge separations occurred at the surface between the dye and the semiconductor and the electrolyte. So, here we have another component which is an electrolyte which is replenishing the uh, loss of the electron all the while. The dye molecules are quite small nanometer size. So, in order to capture a reasonable amount of the incoming light, the layer of the dye molecule needs to be made fairly thick, much thicker than the molecule themselves. So, you see because the coating or the titanium dioxide is of the nanoscale particle size, even the dye molecule is nano size. So, there should be enough coating so that the trapping of the electron the generation of the electron is substantial, but still it cannot be like a you know a coating of this order, it is still very fine coating. Dye sensitized solar cells based on titanium dioxide are promising low cost alternative to conventional solid state so photovoltaic cell based on materials such as silicon, cadmium and so on. Despite offering relatively high conversion efficiencies for solar energy, typical dye sensitized solar cells suffer from durability problems that result from their use of the organic liquid electrolytes containing the iodide and the triodide redox couple, which causes serious problems as the electrode corrosion and electrolyte leakage takes place. So, for every system you see there are advantages and there are advan disadvantages also. 
it is not that uh, this dye sensitized solar cells have no uh, disadvantage, but one has to then try to find out how to come about because the compositional situation, the cost of dye and making this dye sensitized solar cell is fairly low cost. So, can we find an alternative to these problems? Replacements of iodine based liquid electrolytes have been extensively studied, but the efficiencies of the re resulting devices remain low. So, it has been found that although iodide uh, tri iodide electrolyte system is the best, but it has its own problems and when other type of electrolytes were tried out, the cell efficiency was not match with this. So, therefore, one has to rely on this particular electrolyte, but there were some suggestions that some other uh, cesium uh, material having tin can uh, having tin iodide tri iodide can also be used. Here it is shown that the solution processable P type direct ba uh, band gap semiconductor that is cesium tin triodide can be used for whole conduction in lieu of the liquid electrolyte. So, one replacement that was thought was CSCN I 3. The resulting solid state you know it is a solid state electrolyte not in a liquid situation. Dye sensitized solar cells consisting of this doped with tin fluoride nano on the nano porous titanium dioxide and a dye which was of synthetic type N719 show conversion efficiency up to 10.2 percent with a band gap of 1.3 electro volts. Now, this definitely this compound CSCN I3 enhances visible light absorption on the red side of the spectrum to outperform the typical dye sensitized solar cells in this spectral region. But then you see what is the main issue, how to get an easy availability of this new iodide compound. Inorganic solar cell system that consists of P type direct band gap semiconductor that is CSCNI3 with nanoporous titanium and using cis isothiocyanito bis bipyridyl dicarboxylato ruthenium tetra butyl ammonium compound. So, it this dye is N. 719 is actually a dye made out of inorganic uh, substance ruthenium. We, it shows that this particular material is well fitted for this purpose because it creates 1.3 electro volt of energy and therefore, it was found that uh, this is uh, a good substance for carrying out the this. A particular as a dye in order to have a replacement of a liquid electrolyte in place of a solid state electrolyte, this was a good option. However, consequently in this solution processable, it can be transferred into titanium dioxide pores at a molecular level to make intimate contact with the dye molecule. And it was also compatible with you know that impregnation or dye coating. So, that this material along with tin fluoride doping can act as a good material of a solid state to convert this energy and a Gretzel cell containing this uh, N719 dye was giving an efficiency of almost now from 10.2 it has started giving an efficiency of 9, 11 percent. Similarly, natural dye as photosensitizers for dye sensitized solar cells have also been explored. The dye sensitized solar cell that is because in the beginning itself I had told you that there is a possibility that both uh, synthetic dyes where we saw that ruthenium type of dye could be used or even natural dye can be used. And it was found that dye sensitized solar cells using natural dye uh, extracted from black rice, 
capsicum, erythrina, variegata flower, rosa xanthina have been used as a sensitizer and as good as 0 0.55 to 0 0.4 volt uh, has been achieved through this and it was found that these dye sensitized with natural dye extract uh, are fairly good as a sensitizer dye. In the extract the natural fruit, leaves or flowers chosen, the black rice extract performed the best. That means the photosensitization effect from the darker dye was better, which was due to the better interaction between the carbonyl and the hydroxyl group of the anthocyanin molecule on black rye extract and the surface of the titanium porous film. We were talking, so now you see anthocyanins can be a good source for even dye sensitized solar cells. They are good for making pH uh, papers and for acid base titration and of course, time and again we have been talking about this anthocyanin which are so widely occurring in nature that they can be used for dyeing purposes also. The yellow, uh, the food pigment from monascus yellow extracted from monascus fermentation which is a red yeast rice has been studied for the novel sensitizing dye as dye sensitized solar cells. So, here also the efficiency was found to be 2.3 and the photo current in action spectrum was in agreement with the adsorption spectrum of the dye ab adsorbed on the nano crystalline titanium dioxide electrode. The dye sensitized solar cell fabrication process has been optimized in terms of rinsing solvent used after dye adsorption and dye uptake duration. After optimizing monocrystalline titanium dioxide electrode and pH condition, the resulting maximum photovoltaic characteristic that could be obtained was 0.57 volt. So, which is a very good situation because you know from a cheaply available dye, if the these cells can be made, there can be nothing better than this. The blue shift of the absorption wavelength of the black rice extract in ethanol solution on titanium dioxide film and the blue shift phenomena from the absorption spectrum of the photo action spectrum of the dye sensitized uh, with uh, black rice extract are have been you know uh, discussed in this lecture and has been made clear to you that they are so very important because they are from the anthocyanin. Because of the simple preparation technique, wide availability and low cheap cost of the natural dye, the anthocyanin natural dye, it is a good alternative for making sensitizers for dye sensitized solar cell and there is a lot of promising. Uh, uh, work that is going on in this technology area.